Chairman Powell gave us some news today, the uh, explanation of the Fed's new framework policy. Uh, this was widely expected to come out in September, so I guess the first question is, why now? Why was it important to do this now? Uh, as you know, this uh, framework review got going in 2019, and uh, the chairman uh, wanted to wrap this up earlier this year. And we were close to that, but then the pandemic came along, so it got delayed a little bit. Um, I thought, you know, the decision to um, unveil this at Jackson Hall, I think, is an appropriate use of that forum for this purpose. So I thought it made a lot of sense, and it was gave him a chance to uh, come out with a major speech and, and uh, show where the committee uh, came down on this issue. So the new policy states that appropriate monetary policy will likely aim to achieve inflation moderately above 2 percent for some time. How do you define moderately and how do you define some time? Yeah, uh, you know, as in any uh, endeavor like this, it's, it's a very large committee, as you know, with many opinions. So I don't think you want to get into precise mathematical uh, formulas here. But the spirit of this is that uh, in the committee's judgment, it would be wise to allow inflation to be above target for some time to make up for past misses to the low side. And then markets, having expected that, will then uh, cement their expectations at 2% inflation. Well, you know, what's happened is we've missed our target to the low side uh, for quite a while here. Uh, almost a decade, uh, depending on how you measure it. Um, and we think that that's because uh, the effect of lower bound is kind of pulling the average inflation down over time. So this is a way to make up for that and make sure that you get credibility for your 2% inflation target. Well, what would you be comfortable with in terms of an overshoot? You know, this is, uh, this is close to nominal GDP targeting, which I've... Uh, which I've advocated. Price level targeting is in this family of policies. Uh, average inflation targeting is kind of a, uh, you know, more practical version of those ideas. And um, <clears throat> if you wanted to stay on the price level path that was established from 1995 to 2012, you know, you could run two and a half percent inflation for quite a while. You could do the calculations yourself, but. Uh, the idea would be that, uh, you know, we're going to try to make up for past misses, uh, but it's going to be in the judgment of the committee and there are, are different opinions around the table. Is it symmetric in terms of time? For example, you've missed now on 2 percent for years. Would that mean you'd run over 2 percent for years? Yeah, I think that's a judgment that the, uh, the committee will have to make. And, and uh, one thing about uh, price level targeting for those viewers that know a little bit about it is that it it does depend when you start uh, when you start doing the targeting. So if you start measuring, you know, from uh, a few years ago or many years ago or something in between, you'll get different answers for uh, for how to stay on the price level path. So I think we're just starting on this uh, endeavor now. We're doing a soft version of this, but. Um, I think this will provide a better commitment to the idea that uh, we want to make up for past losses as best we can and using the judgment of the committee uh, going forward. Why isn't this a return to 1960s Fed policy making, uh, trading a little higher inflation for a little lower unemployment? And that didn't end particularly well. Yeah, I think one of the things that the new uh, framework acknowledges is that the committee's going to try to make up for shortfalls you know, of employment from maximum employment as opposed to deviations. Um, the deviations language is a little bit of technical jargon that, that um, uh, we replaced here. You know, if we'd like unemployment to be as low as possible, um, as for as long as possible, because that's helping the most people in the society. And uh, we're already keeping track of inflation on, the, on that side of the mandate, the inflation side of the mandate, and making sure inflation doesn't uh, get out of control here. So I would see it as quite a bit different from anything that was going on in the 60s. 
Well, of course, the big question everybody has is, given the performance of inflation over the last 10 years or so, what makes you think you can even get it to 2 percent, let alone over 2? Yeah, so I, I think the culmination of this review suggests that the, uh, the idea has been that the zero lower bound, or now we're calling it the effective lower bound, but whatever you call it, that's causing a bias downward in inflation, not just in the United States, but certainly in Japan and now in Europe as well. And, uh, you know, the whole idea of inflation targeting was adopted uh, without really thinking about the zero lower bound or really worrying about it very much. But now that we obviously after the global financial crisis, we were at our effective lower bound for a long time. Now we're back at the effective lower bound. So that's causing this downward bias in actual inflation outcomes relative to target. You've got to do something to address that if you're going to have a credible 2% target. That's the idea here. And uh, I think this will help a lot. Um, I think there was a perception both in markets and perhaps in the policymaking community as well that the 2% inflation was some kind of a ceiling and that you were going to try to get inflation up to 2%, but only asymptotically from below. And that led to long periods of time when inflation was running below the target. So by loosening that up some and, and shooting for something somewhat higher over some period of time, uh, you should be able to get inflation at 2% on average. So uh, I think inflation expectations should be uh, moved up a little bit now in, in markets in response to this. Market inflation expectations may rise, but have inflation dynamics changed in such a way that it's going to be difficult? The idea of globalization, the idea that Americans are now conditioned to the idea of keeping prices low, buying only on sale, and the fact that energy prices are uh, seem to be uh, locked in a lower range. Uh, those other issues are certainly still around, but here's what's different this time is, you know, when unemployment goes down to very low levels, the committee has traditionally responded to that by trying to preemptively raise interest rates in anticipation that inflation would be higher uh, in the future. That's certainly what we did in 2016, 2017. Uh, that was a very traditional Fed type strategy, but all that, all that happened was that we ended up with inflation missing uh, on the low side for many years. So, I think this pulls back from that preemptive strategy and, uh, and allows the overshoot over some period of time. So hopefully we'll get uh, inflation to be more on target uh, more of the time. Once you name a target in central banking, you should definitely hit it. That's, credibility is everything, and you really want to hit it uh, as much as you can. Uh, one more on the, this new framework review. One other aspect of the change announced today is an emphasis on financial stability. Does that suggest that you and your colleagues are concerned about the level of asset prices now? Well, uh, I, I think a lot of this review was uh, trying to collect and codify what's actually going on in the committee and how people are thinking about monetary policy. And one aspect of that, certainly, uh, going all the way back to the irrational exuberant speech of, of uh, Alan Greenspan in the 1990s, is that the committee is concerned with financial stability and does not want to tolerate a situation where, uh, where you have a um, financial instability brewing. And so the ability to get some language in this statement that, that acknowledges that and, and talks about that a little bit, I think, is a success story of this uh, part of the framework review. Well, let me ask you about the economy now and the economy of the 8th District. Uh, what are you seeing? If you were giving your presentation at the Open Market Committee meeting now, what would you say ab about the St. Louis District? Uh, I, I would say, generally speaking, many businesses are quite optimistic right now, and that's because we're in one of the fastest growth quarters of all time for the U.S. economy. So they're getting phone calls and orders and things are picking up. So you certainly hear that a lot in talking to uh, most businesses, I would say. There are some businesses 
as we all know, that have been really hit hard by the COVID crisis, and, and they're still in the doldrums uh, in, and not recovering nearly as much. But for most businesses, I think uh, the uh, you know, orders, uh, the revenue, the general business conditions are definitely picking up. Uh, you know, a lot of the tracking estimates for the third quarter are that the U.S. economy will grow in the 20 percent range somewhere, uh, almost 30 percent at an annual rate. That's a, a preposterously fast uh, growth rate, but that's because we're coming off uh, the very deep contraction in the second quarter. So I think we're definitely in that sharp growth phase, and I, I think we also that businesses are learning to adapt to the COVID crisis. They're learning to conduct their businesses in ways that are safe, that can protect yeah. their customers, and that can protect their workers. Well, how long do you think it would be till we get unemployment to a level where your new framework would even come into play? How long are we going to have the labor market that we're experiencing now? Well, I'm hopeful that uh, the unemployment rate will continue to fall uh, much more rapidly than it has in past recessions, because this is a very different uh, type of recession. Uh, you have a lot of workers describing themselves as being on temporary layoff, um, upwards of 60 percent uh, right now. Uh, normally, that would only be 10 percent of all unemployed workers are describing themselves as on temporary layoff. So at least in principle, those uh, workers can get recalled. Probably not all of them will, but many of them will uh, during the second half of the year here. And you'll see the unemployment rate uh, continuing to fall. I've done other calculations that all of them got recalled you know, unemployment will go down, way down in four or five percent uh, range. Now, you know, probably that won't happen uh, and it won't happen instantaneously. But the idea that uh, you could have a pretty dramatic fall in unemployment, I think, is, is a reasonable one in this scenario, especially as firms continue to learn a lot about the disease, how to control it and how to conduct their business safely.